was two weeks ago uh, I was speaking to you, uh, preaching again, and, and uh, I just want to remind you of a couple of the things that we spoke about uh, those two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, uh, the, the first reading, we, we heard uh, the, about the Jews who were, uh, who'd forgotten who they were meant to be. They'd forgotten their calling, and Paul had to remind them. They'd been trying to stop Paul from evangelizing, and Paul reminded them that God had called them to be a light for the nations, to bring his salvation to the ends of the earth, and they had forgotten this. Saint uh, Catherine of Siena said, be whom God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. And probably the reason that most of us are not sitting with our brothers and sisters, uh, sons and daughters, are because we as a church have forgotten whom we're meant to be. And many of our problems in the church stem from this. Uh, I, I think we've identified the things we do with who we are. And the things we do do not define who we are. They, they have an impact. But celebrating Mass and the sacraments is not who we are. And we've forgotten who we are. In the first reading, today we have the, um, the, the apostles having to, to gather and discuss. They're gathering to discuss things and work out things because there, there's division in the church. There are people who think this is the way we shall be saved and other people saying, no, this is the way we shall be saved. And it's just confusing everybody because they've got these two points of view, two visions, divisions in the church. And it's just making life hard for everyone. And, you know, it was happening right at the beginning of the church. Has anything changed? Not really. You know, the problem with the church is it's still got people in it. You know, that's... But the, so the apostles had to, to, to gather together and say, no, this is who we are. This is where we're going. This is our vision for the church. And St. John uh, has that vision. God gives him a very clear vision of the church, the perfect the church, the, the church coming down from heaven from God, the new Jerusalem. This is whom we're meant to be. This church that is filled with light, that has uh, three doors on every, three gates uh, on every side, so that people can come in from every side. There's not just one church entrance, and only that way can you enter in, but from all around, anybody can come in from any side. There's no temple, because the temple is God himself. There's no division anymore, no separation for the people, no veil to, to part, to be able to enter into the presence of God. The people in the church now have direct access, that personal relationship, the intimacy that God desires with his people. This is the vision of whom we should be, whom we should be. Be whom you're meant to be, and you will set the world on fire. And we have forgotten whom we're meant to be. Bishop Hugh and I and, and uh, uh, the parish leadership team, we got together and we talked about who we as a parish are meant to be. And if you look in your bulletins, you'll see right at the top underneath the, the St. Mary's Cathedral, you'll see the vision, what we're aiming for, of who we're meant to be as a parish. Be whom you're meant to be and you will Set the world on fire. Be whom you're meant to be, and you will. To be a Christ-centered community, which is alive, 
forming and sending out joyful followers of Jesus. Christ-centered. Do you know, when God created us as human beings, He created us to have a relationship with Him. He created us for Himself. That's who we're meant to be, folks. For God. United with God. Intimately. Personally. That's the way we were created. And when we, ex when we live that, we come to life. We are alive because he who is life dwells in me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. That's his desire for you. And so when we put Christ at the center, when we have encountered him, when we have given ourselves to him, when we have allowed him to enter into us and become the center of our lives, the, the, the focal point of every decision that we make, we come to life. A Christ-centered community which is alive. And I'm not talking about the community in a general thing. I'm talking about you. Having Jesus Christ at the center of your life. And in doing so, becoming alive. As you are meant to be. As you desire to be. As you hope to be. the gospel, Jesus speaks about those who keep my word. <coughs> he speaks about the Holy Spirit. I've just forgotten what he said about the Holy Spirit. But it's about uh, the Spirit will teach you everything. And as disciples, as those who, ha those who have Christ at the center of our lives, we seek to live his word. We seek to to know more about him. We seek to allow him to teach us who we are meant to be. Because when we are whom we're meant to be, we will set the world on fire. This is what God calls us to be as a parish, as individuals. To put Christ at the center to come to life, to allow ourselves to be formed so that we can go out and bring others in. Now, you know, it sounds great, Father, <coughs> wonderful, but can that actually happen? Does it actually happen? Because I haven't seen it. Well, yes, it does. It does. We've got 25 young people here from Canada, who have had that experience. And one of them is going to share her experience with us just now, so we can see. And, and over the next two weeks while they're here, more of them will be giving us their stories about how God has done exactly that in their lives. So I'm just gonna invite Devon to come forward from Canada. Good morning, everyone. And on behalf of all of us missionaries from Canada, um, thank you so much for welcoming us into your parish. Uh, we're so excited to be here. Um, my name is Devin. I'm from Calgary in the west of Canada. I'm here with Catholic Christian Outreach, which is a university campus movement in Canada focused on evangelization. I used to be agnostic. As a teenager, I was introduced to the idea that religion was in opposition to science and could be disproved. Despite growing up in a Christian family, I didn't have enough, I didn't know enough about my own faith to defend it. So for years, I was under the impression that I couldn't be an intelligent person and believe in God. However, I never quite came to terms with the idea that there was no God, so I settled with the belief that there was just no way to know for sure. This all changed with one eye-opening conversation about three years ago. A friend of mine told me that he was Catholic, and frankly, I was surprised. He didn't fit with this notion that I had that religious people were foolish or ignorant. 
He was, in fact, an intelligent person who believed in God. And frankly, I was shocked. So I asked him about it, and he was more than happy to talk about his faith. What struck me was that he had real answers to my questions, and I began to see that it wasn't about blind belief, that the Catholic faith was actually entirely rational. This conversation was the first of many. I was left wanting to know more about the Catholic faith, and I spent a lot of time over the next year learning everything I could. I think that when we encounter the truth, we know it in our hearts. As I learned the beliefs and teachings of the Catholic Church, I had an overwhelming sense of certainty that this was the truth. It was during that year that my friend introduced me to Catholic Christian Outreach. I had never seen so much joy in one place before. I wasn't Catholic, but I was warmly welcomed anyway. After some time, I agreed to take a faith study. It was in this faith study that I came to understand the gospel message for the first time in my life. I had always heard things like, Jesus died for our sins, but that statement is far from self-explanatory. I finally understood now the how and the why and what his sacrifice really meant. And it was then that I chose to invite Christ into the center of my life. Shortly afterward, I went through RCIA and was baptized and confirmed the following Easter. In a conversation about my conversion, someone once asked me if I'm happier now than I was before I knew Christ. This question really made me think, and truthfully, happiness is not the word I would use to describe what I have gained. Inviting Christ into my life didn't cure me of suffering, but what I do have now is hope. It's hope that brings me joy, that has changed the way I see myself and the world, that gives me courage to do things I had never dreamed of, and that gives me a solid ground to stand on when my world is being shaken. The hope that Christ gives us is life-changing and can never be extinguished. As Pope Benedict XVI once said, he takes nothing away and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Thank you. Devon is one of 25 who are here. And uh, last night they went out and uh, into the streets and invited people to come into the church to light a candle. We call it night light and to say a prayer. I forgot to ask, how many people came in? Does anybody know from the team? Seven? 70 candles were lit. So about 70 people came in. Is that, is that about right? Uh, <clears throat> And I hear it was quite emotional for a number of them, very emotional. It was going on till about midnight, and, and I was praying in the church during that time. And as I was praying, you know, I, I had, a, <laughs> excuse me for saying this, but I, had a, had a, I think I had a vision, a, a prophetic one, a prophetic one, a prophetic vision. Uh, I was praying, and as I was praying, I saw this church on fire. It was in flames and it was raging flames. But the church wasn't being burnt up. It was like a furnace in here. And those flames were pouring out that door, pouring out. Folks, the flames aren't some kind of spiritual energy or magic. The flames are you because you have remembered whom you're meant to be. And you're starting to set the world on fire. 